everybody, Tony D. Little Joan ruined the take I did of this. I I had her in my lap. <laughs> she wouldn't sit still. I had snacks here. She drove me nuts. And I finally sat her down on the floor. And then she started barking at me. And I'm just... Uh, little Joan. So Little Joan's in the other room thinking about what she did. And I have to concentrate. Because I have the big thoughts on the election. And there's a lot going on. And my head is full of thoughts. First up, Rudy Giuliani tweets, Big win for honest elections. And Trim County judge in Michigan order forensic examination of 22 Dominion voting machines. This is where the untrustworthy Dominion machine flipped 6,000 votes from Trump to Biden. Spiking of votes by Dominion happened all over the state. I think this is a pretty important win. If the Trump team can establish that they're that the Dominion voting machines flip the vote, even just in one machine in one place, then the next step is to establish it in any other place, forensically, through either the algorithm or a virus or whatever. If they can establish that in two places, um, you are talking about a very strong piece of evidence that you have to throw out all the states that voted with Dominion. And that's too many states. That essentially would mean <laughs> you would either have to, throw, first off, it wouldn't be enough electors for anybody to win. Uh, you'd essentially have to throw out the entire election, which is what I think they should do. That's what I think SCOTA should do. I think they should look at this and go, this election's effed. It's completely effed. We can't. We can't be sure that we had an honest election here. We have all these numbers, but what good are they if they're a lie? So I think this is huge. Um, there is at least one other state that is also doing this. Uh, let's go through it at the Epic Times, which is covering this stuff pretty closely. Uh, now, before I get into this, let me talk about briefly the video coming out of Georgia. Now, if you haven't seen it, it's a video of a bunch of poll workers. And what happens is one of them comes out, tells everybody, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna shut down until tomorrow, come back at 8 a.m. It's like midnight when this happens. A bunch of people leave, and then as soon as they're gone, they pull out these suitcases with more ballots and start counting. Now, Scott Adams, uh, creator of Dilbert, who does a podcast, which you should check out, and he's a, a, a very big brain individual, um, said that as much as I want to believe this video, there is a perfectly logical explanation for all the behavior you see. And I'm paraphrasing, but in a nutshell, what he says is what you see here looks bad, but really it's just normal people doing normal things. The people they sent home, they were not... Um, observers, they were just the people who opened the envelopes uh, and it was time for them to leave and they just left and yes, they pulled ballots out, but where else are you going to store them? That's where they stored them. It's perfectly normal. Um, but I would add a couple of things. Number one, um, I think the timing of it is very suspicious. Um, if that were the case, as he says, they just sent the envelope cutters home then I think they would have pulled the suitcases out immediately because why not why wouldn't you pull the suitcases out in front of the cutters you know as they were leaving they waited until the cutters had left if they are in fact just the envelope cutters um, the fact that there's no Republican observers there well yes Technically, I guess in Michigan, they have the option of observing, but they don't have to observe. But uh, it looks very suspicious. The, the second thing I would say, it almost doesn't matter. Because now, the governor of Georgia, uh, Brian Kemp, has called for an audit, a real audit of the state. Which should flip it to Trump, if it's a real audit. Um, there's been a lot of malfeasance in Georgia. I'm not sure they're able to cover it all up, which is why they're fighting so hard. 
I'm not sure they're going to get the audit they want, but if this story, because this story looks so suspicious, not because it necessarily is, although Scott admits it could be, it could be exactly what people think it is, but he doesn't think so. It's a little too on the nose for him. Um, yeah, I think if it starts the investigation, it doesn't matter. Because once you have the investigation to make sure of that, it'll open up all the other cans of worms if they exist, which I think they do. I mean, at this point, I think there's a big can of worms in Georgia. I think people are going to jail in Georgia. I really do. Um, between Lidwood and Sidney Powell, and they seem to have a mountain of evidence. A mountain. And the other controversy is, of course, Lynn Wood. Now, I think... Again, I think Lynn Wood is probably just a Democrat who switched over to Trump. You know, it does look a little weird that he donated to so many people all the way up to 2017-18, but he points out, well, I donated to Republicans. I'm not, he considers himself nonpartisan. Um, you know, at this point, I think if Lynn Wood is a plant, it's over. So let's just trust him at this point. There's no stopping him at this point. He's, he's, he's in too deep in, uh, on the side of Trump. To be jettisoned at this point. I mean, I don't know what damage you think he's going to do. Now, he and Sidney Powell were encouraging people, hey, don't vote for these rhinos. That's a valid, you know, principled stand. And I respect that. But I would say you should probably vote for the rhinos anyway in Georgia. Uh, because if Trump loses, um, you know, they can hopefully hold the Senate and hold the line until... The Republicans can come back and take it in 2022. If they lose it, um, I think the, the Democrats could do a ton of damage. And if they successfully steal an election, there's no incentive from stopping them from doing it again and again and again. Uh, they'll literally do it until people are burning down the White House at that point. <laughs> and I, I'm not encouraging that behavior at all. I'm saying that that's what it leads to. It leads to uh, total F this. You know, the moment people are starving, they'll, they'll pick up a, the nearest blunt object and go charging, charging into the fray. Um, what choice will they have? Once people lose all hope, that's when things get dicey. Right now, people can still eat and live and have fun. But these uh, left-wing idiots think they can manage everybody. Oh, we can manage 330 million people. Hell, we can manage the world. We'll get you enough food to eat, and you'll have a great job, and you'll have benefits. Oh, everything's going to work out great. We have a plan, but you have to be patient. <laughs> you have to be patient. The Great Reset, it's going to take time. But it's all going to work out. No, it's not. They don't understand how complicated life is. They're in a state of denial. I think it's a combination of denial, ignorance, and narcissism, really. They are narcissistic enough to believe that they can run everyone's life. Uh, they're in denial about communism. <laughs> Certainly some of Biden, uh, Biden's staff are. The, a picture came out with a woman uh, who's going to be on Biden's staff. Who She was wearing a Soviet-era hat with a hammer and sickle. It was bright pink. Woohoo! so funny, I'm a commie. Um... She is out of her mind and should not be allowed, you know, 40 years ago, she would have been run out of town on a rail. I mean, there'd be no, you know, one picture like that, that would have been the end of her career. Now it's like, oh, it's so vogue. I'm such a communist. It's going to be great. You're all going to get whatever you want. Mommy's going to help you. No, mommy doesn't know what she's doing. Uh, once the economy collapses, then it'll be, oh, you know, we all have to share and it's a tough time now. So you're not going to get all the food you need. And you might have to share your house with 40 people. Sorry. Yeah, no, people are going to stand for that. They're, 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 you know, so, um, but we're not there yet. Not, not by a long shot. So everybody calm down. Um, I'm, I'm hoping, I'm hopeful that Trump pulls the rabbit out of his behind. And even if he doesn't, uh, I am very hopeful that uh, the, the decline that we may see under a Biden presidency will be very slow. They'll try to do things. They'll be so unpopular that, you know, these people are weak-willed. They'll back off. They'll be forced to. Um, and I think part of it will be, you know, uh, Phil Murphy's got an election coming up next year. 
uh, if he intends to continue to lock down the state and destroy the economy, I mean, he could kiss any chance of his re-election goodbye. Cheating or not, he couldn't cheat enough <laughs> at that point. When New Jersey elects a red uh, governor, that means we really hated the previous governor. Um, so when McGreevy, uh, one of our governors, was he, he had to quit. It was such a big scandal. He, he was he was in real trouble. Uh, Google uh, Jim McGreevy sometime. Um, you know, there was just no way a Democrat was going to win the next election. No effing way. Uh, and that's how we got... How did we, who did we get after that? I guess it was Cor... No, I guess we got Christie. Yeah, we got Christie after that. And then we got Corzine, or it was the other way around? I think it was the other way around. But uh, long story short, you know, we've had Republican governors. Um, but the next time we get one, the problem is, of course, we got Christie and Christie as the bed and, <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, Christie won't run again. Uh, he'd be, a, he'd be fool, a fool to run again. Nobody would vote for him in the primary. Pretty much any other Repu any Republican they put up in New Jersey, uh, you know, short of a guy who's just, you know, I don't know. I, I don't know. As long as it's not Chris Christie, I'm pretty much on board already. <laughs> so, uh, you know, Murphy's done. Murphy's so done. Uh, just like everybody else. I mean, Michigan, Gritmer's, Whitmer's done. There's no way she gets reelected. Um, Kemp, he's done. I mean, all these governors, they're all going to get blasted. All of them. All of them by their constituency. The problem with the Democrats, they do win elections once in a while, but they promise and promise and promise, and then they don't deliver, and then everybody hates them. You know, Republicans already hate Biden. You don't need to, you know, they're going to hate him even more if uh, they, they rig him in. Um, but Antifa already hates Biden. Uh, a bunch of Democrats already hate Biden. Everybody will hate Biden. <laughs> so, and, and Kamala Harris won't be an improvement if they take Biden out. And take out, I mean, just remove him and, and put Kamala in his stead. It's just not, you know, it's just not going to, it's just going to hate them. Absolutely hate them. I mean, look at Fox News. Fox News, top of their game. They're getting ratings at the wazip. And then one night, they their, their audience felt betrayed. It only took one night. And now they're a dumpster fire. So that is the power of Trump's audience. That's the power of Trump. He's going to have that power whether, he, whether he's president or not. Yeah, you can go after him with lawsuits all you want. There will be 70, 80, 90 million people who go, we love that guy. Leave him alone. Um, so good luck. Good luck. And there's money in that audience. There's huge money. So imagine a Trump TV where 50 million people watch every night. There won't be another... You think the cable stations could not run that channel? 50 million people? You think the the sponsors could afford not to advertise on Trump TV? No. Trump TV, if he goes to Trump TV, he will be the media. That'll be the biggest media organization in history. But I digress. Election. In Wisconsin, Trump campaigns files affidavit in Wisconsin alleging denial of observers. Um, so there's lots going on in Wisconsin still. In Michigan, uh, GOP Secretary of State is trying to delete the data amid the audit. She's The Secretary of State is pushing for a complete deletion of all the data. That should tell you right there. They, they, they know they're guilty. They know they're cheating. I hope she goes to prison for trying to delete evidence. I hope they prove she knew they cheated. She, I hope they prove she knew something and tried to delete that data because that would be the destruction of evidence. Oh, I would love to see them get her. I really would. I believe it's a woman. Uh, there was a woman in the picture in the article. In Pennsylvania, lots going on there. So there is a lawsuit going to SCOTUS. Now, that sounds great. Here's the problem. The safe harbor provision in the Constitution says that by December 8th, 
or you know it just turned out to be december 8th this time around they pick like a day they pick like a day like the first i guess what is that it's like the second thursday right so or second tuesday so they pick that day and by that day if you've had your electors certified and, and nobody's got any serious qualms about it you're good to go but under the constitution if there's still problems you're not good to go so alito agreed to hear the uh, case but he scheduled it for the ninth after the deadline so there's two schools of thought the first school of thought is he scheduled it for the ninth because they're just going to throw up their hands and say, well, it's too late, but next time, blah, 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 which could happen. I mean, prepare yourself. That would be a D move, but uh, it could happen. It could also be that they listen to the evidence and say, well, this is obvi obviously fraudulent or obviously unconstitutional. We can't just stand idly by while you violate the Constitution. Here's the legal ramifications of that which is what I hope they do. What I hope they do is what the lawsuit wants, which is to uh, declare that the mail-in ballots in Pennsylvania are unconstitutional. That would be a step for making all the mail-in ballots unconstitutional, because they are. You don't change the rules like a few days before the game. Um, this is what the Democrats did. Everybody warned them not to do it, Trump especially. There's all sorts of malfeasance. It's mostly from the mail-in ballots. So that would be good, or who knows what they could state. I mean, it's SCOTUS. So the, 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 if they get there, the, the, the judges are on, the justices are kind of on the side of Trump. So it could be a good thing. You could get a good ruling that helps Trump and den at the very least denies the votes to Biden, denies the electoral votes. Or we could get some sort of halfway measure where it's like, well, we, we, we find there's malfeasance, but uh, the vote's already been certified or whatever. Uh, really, it should go back to the state legislature and they should choose the voters, uh, the electoral voters. If they do, they would pick the ones that went with went Trump. I mean, really, it's a battle between Governor Wolf, who's a Democrat, and the state legislature. This is what you get for electing a Democrat, Pennsylvania. How about never doing it again? Georgia. Uh, Georgia is just, besides the camera stuff, besides a million other things, um, they're, they're probing things. They, you got the runoff election January 5th, which again, I urge people, if you're in Georgia, please vote Republican, uh, in those Senate elections, because look, if the Democrats are allowed to install Biden and that's what they will do, um, and there's no Senate to temper them. Um, you could see them run roughshod over everything. You could see them stack the course in which courts, in which case, nice going, SCOTUS. You really effed it up. Uh, you could see them attempt to undo everything and not care and not care and have the medium back them 100%. Um, you know, some pundits I watch say, ah, that's probably not going to happen. It would look too bad. It would look too hypocritical. I wouldn't put it past the current Democratic Party. They are foaming at the mouth for to get this power back, and I don't think they care. The behavior of their membership, which I'll get into, you know, Gavin Newsom, Nancy Pelosi, all these people, they just don't care anymore. They don't care. They're separate from real people now and they do not care so i would not give them the opportunity that would be my decision even though i i, I totally respect linwood's position uh, and sydney powell to say well they're rhinos don't vote for them until they back trump but they're rhinos it's just no getting around it um but vote for them vote for them anyway um because if if they if you lose them both it, this could be the last real election in the united states seriously uh in nevada there is a flood of evidence I, and you know rudy said it best uh all the different problems in in the other swing states nevada has them all uh now one judge already 
uh, kicked out uh, the Trump team, said, no, I'm not even going to hear your case. But, I mean, they've got 40,000 voters who voted twice, uh, 1,500 dead voters, all kinds of crazy, uh, 20 binders of evidence of voter fraud. I think they're going to flip Nevada. I think that's a, that is a pretty done deal. I think they're definitely going to flip Nevada. It sounds really good for Michigan, quite frankly. And it's sounding good for Georgia. And I think that's enough. I think that's enough. That would be 16, 16, and 5. Uh, be 37. Yeah, that would be enough. So, but I mean, they all sound good, really. But I'm an optimist. I, have an op I definitely have an optimism bias, as you all are well aware of. And finally, Arizona. Uh, they're calling for a forensic audit audit of Dominion voting machines. Again, if they find it in Arizona and in Michigan, that's it, man. That's it. That's a real pattern of behavior. Look, we've got two different states where the Dominion voting machines change the vote. Then we have 27, 25 other states, at least, that use the same voting system. We cannot be sure that they that these are accurate. We can't. We can't be sure. You have to avoid the election. I mean, any logical person would see it that way. People who suffer from TDS go, no! Um, so I think the only fair way is a contingent election. I really do. Are we going to get it? I hope so. I, uh, again, I'm very hopeful. I think Trump is pushing for it hard. Um, you know, I think Rudy is, is doing a good job. I mean, the, the media is tearing him to pieces every chance they get. I don't know why... Some of these, some of these witnesses are so wacky. They had the drunk woman, um, but they haven't really shown the good ones. There have been some really heartfelt ones who are just, you know, they're very credible. Oh, and um, the Pennsylvania thing, uh, the trucker, the the whole trucker thing is is coming. To you know, I I talked about it a few days ago, but it, when it happened, but this trucker, he drove from Bethpage, New York to Harrisburg and then Lancaster with with anywhere from 150 to 280,000 votes. And nobody's sure why or if they're fake or whatever. So that's blowing up now. And uh, that seems to be a thing. And it, it, we it got him and two other witnesses. So I'm not sure where that's going, but it sounds like that's a big fraud scheme. And, and where the hell did these votes come from? And if, were they counted? Um, so, I mean, it's just a freaking fire hose like uh, Sydney said, of information. Oh, and this this is had nothing to do with the, the server stuff. I mean, if they got the server information, I don't see how you can anoint Biden. Because if Biden becomes president and then the investigation happens, no. Uh, about the best you could do then is Trump could appoint a special prosecutor that Biden could not fire. But... So what? I mean, he could he could investigate and investigate, and they could just stymie him. And then when he shows his results, the media will say, oh, this is a bunch of BS, or not report on it at all at this point. You know, there was a time, at least, when you had malfeasance in your own party. The media was willing to go, oh, yeah, you know, there's some malfeasance here. Now they're just, they're all partisan actors. If you watch TV news, stop. I mean... Look, I'm not a journalist. I just read stuff and then state my opinion on it. But Jesus, I mean, uh, at least I'm not uh, trying to lie to you. I, you know, my biases are pretty obvious. I want Trump to win and I'm pretty optimistic. But I mean, Jesus, these people on TV, uh, CNN is just an S show. Uh, they, they're just so biased. And, and they're biased in that deceptive way where they say, no, no, we're not biased. We're the most trusted name in news. Uh, fair and balanced. Duh. They're not, in my view. They are partisan actors. And even Fox has been exposed as, apparently, the controlled opposition. So it's time for everybody to do their own digging uh, and even make videos about it. Yeah. Uh, so... Uh, there's just so much here. So I recommend the Epic Times. They seem to be covering it pretty well, uh, at least aggregating all the stories here, as you can see. Um, there's a few other places. They even have a little chart with, like, all the various evidence. Um, 
So, you know, do your own research and read and, and see some of these videos. And I got to say, despite the fact that Twitter is heavily, heavily censored, if you follow the right people, um, you get, you know, a flood of information uh, from various sources. So, but, you know, look at everything from a wary eye because, you know, Scott Adams is a Trump supporter and he's a little skeptical about the, this uh, Georgia video. Healthy skepticism is good. It's a it's good because if that Georgia thing flips over in the next couple of days, uh, you know, then they'll call off the audit, and then where will we be? If they if we get the audit, it doesn't matter if that was total BS anyway, as long as it was staged. I don't think it was staged. Um, you know, we get we get the audit. I think Trump wins, but time is wasting. He's got. Four more days until safe harbor. Hopefully some of these states hold out. Hold the line, Republicans. Hold the freaking line.